I'm here with Mike Coulter and Sanford Green. We're going to be talking about some of the Soda City classics that's going on this weekend. And guys, how does it feel to be from South Carolina and to be representing uh, for South Carolina on such a national platform? Uh, it's great. You know, it's something that uh, I never foresaw in my in my future uh, as a kid. Didn't think about this, but uh, here I am uh, here at Benedict College. It's fun because you come back and you realize, you know, nothing's changed in a sense. You know, if you feel like you you're home, you feel like you like you you know the people and you know the students, even though you you really don't. This feels so familiar to me. But um, yeah. So to say, this is a great opportunity. So I can't wait to basically meet the fans, give back to the fans, and sort of just just you know show the love. You know. And this is Benedict College, and you know all about this as well, too. So talk a little bit about the love that you're seeing uh, from Benedict students from here in Columbia as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely a tremendous opportunity, I think, to have uh, Mike here. He came here um, for a year, a year and a half, yeah. and um, I graduated from here. And um, to be able to uh, do what we're doing right now uh, professionally, I think, is uh, pretty uh, unprecedented to be able to uh, be here and to uh, come back um, at this time, you know, and again, being together at Soda City and representing uh, the same character, I think, is kind of uh, kind of surreal and exciting at the same time. Speaking of character, let's let's talk Luke Cage. Mm -hmm. uh, this season, I think some people were a little concerned or confused about: <laughs> Is Luke Cage a villain? Is he a Whoa. hero? But talk a little bit about what, what's going on. Yeah, you know, it's really no way to explain it. I mean, you talk about you know. Journey, to, journey of character, trying to figure out exactly where the character's going, you know, the situation he's in, the circumstances. It makes sense. You know, there's a, he's trying to fight evil. And, you know, you think about the country right now, trying to fight evil but doing it good, doing it with the good way, it's very difficult. You know, um, they have no moral compass, so how, how can you have a moral compass and still defeat them? And I think Luke is sort of in that, in that space right now. He has these powers. Nobody can check him, or it seems like nobody can check him. He's, you know, invincible to a certain degree. Um, and they say, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So I think this is a step in the right direction to see where it goes. Um, but hopefully, I think we'll, he'll, at the end of the day, I think he'll still be a hero, but uh, just might have a little more, a uh, little more gray in him, you know. I mean, what about season three? Is there That's more going on with? Season three hasn't even gotten picked up yet. We'll find out very soon, hopefully. Uh, and once that happens, and that happens, then we can start talking about telling the story. I couldn't tell you if I knew anyway. You know, I couldn't. Don't, <laughs> true, don't true. even try. Don't even try. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know we were gonna spoil her <laughs> alert or anything. Squeezing. <laughs> but when it comes to the comic, right. I mean, how is he developing in the comic as well? Um, honestly, uh, we're waiting for uh, green light for another. Uh, volume of that as well. So um, we're kind of all in the dark with this yeah. thing right now, trying to figure out where uh, Luke is going to be headed next. Um, um, but looking back into um, what I was involved with uh, in the last couple of years, being able to develop the character to make him more of a uh, father figure. Uh, he has a child, uh, married in the comics, um, and just uh, his maturity level in that, uh, in that uh, aspect of it was really um, something that we really wanted to focus on in the books. And um, I was fortunate enough to draw Iron Fist as well, and uh, just to see the contrast between those two characters where uh, Iron Fist is a devil may care kind of uh, attitude, and uh, Luke is a lot more reserved now as, you know, you look back into the uh, early uh, inceptions of the two characters, it was reversed. Um, so to be able to uh, take those characters and um, mature them, if you will, or to uh, evolve them um, is something that uh, I was uh, really um, uh, interested in doing and to see some of the uh, characteristics uh, play out in the actual Luke Cage series is uh, something that's very gratifying for me. Talk a bit about how it feels to be a person of color in the comic world because for the longest time when I knew about comics, everybody looked the same. No one yeah. looked like me, really, except for Storm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so ha talk a little bit about that, how it feels to be able to bring a character to life, someone that looks like you. Um, honestly, truth be told, when I was a kid, um, Power Man was the character that, that I identify with uh, because you could see his face. Black Panther, he was awesome, but he had a mask on. And I didn't know he was black until, you know, a few years later. But I saw Power Man, I saw Luke Cage, and he's on the covers hanging out with uh, Captain America, who's as, you know, Caucasian, you know, male, you know, archetype that um, is really a, a, a prominent role. But to see him with uh, Captain America, to, to see him with Spider-Man, to see him punch the Hulk and actually landed a punch, you know, I was like, wait a minute. 
he looks like me, and he's as strong as these other characters. So it gave me that uh, feeling of of um, belonging. You know, it felt like I can identify with this character, and it made me uh, just grad, uh, grad uh, I guess, gravitate towards that character. So that, for me, is uh, one of the things that um, really inspired me as a kid to see not only myself in that character, but to also want to create characters just like that. Characters that look like me, characters that uh, have my experiences and background. So it's kind of a full circle here. Mike, what about you? Well, wait a minute, what was that? The question Sorry, of was a person, <laughs> uh, being yeah, a person of color and representing yeah. in, uh, in the comic book world and Marvel world. Well, well. you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where when the opportunity came, I wasn't I, I wasn't as aware of the lack of, of diversity in the comic books because I told people a lot of times when I read comic books, I guess you know for me I, I didn't necessarily need the character to be the same color. Now that I've done this character, now I see what inclusion does for people. I know how I see how it inspires young black um, men and females when they see a likeness of themselves on the screen because sometimes they need that. Um, that sort of identification where they feel like I can do that too. Um, for me, I always tell people, you know, Bruce Lee was Asian, a little small guy. I, I thought I was Bruce Lee. I thought I could do everything he did. Um, that was my imagination. Um, but being here now in the position I'm in, it's great because inspiring people to do things. I mean, a lot of times you talk to people, the inspiration leads to other things. It's not just about you know, like, you know, I'm going to be an actor or be anything. Well, it's just confidence, building the confidence that now they go, I belong, I'm, I'm special, I can do things, and I'm represented, and it's not someone who, and, and it's not by a negative, a negative stereotype. Because a lot of times you see negative, negative stereotypes with black males and stuff in, in, the, in, the, um, in the media, which are, are there for a reason, and perpetuate that mythology that we're all you know, violent and that we're all mm -hmm. criminals. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to sort of go back against that. We had to start there because that's where the comic book was written and that's how it was you know, originally started. But we want to take this character of Luke Cage and diversify him and make him you know, the thoughtful character, the, the, um, the, the impactful emotional character, the, the person who is um, thinking about the big picture and also thinking about family, thinking about community, these kinds of things. So uh, that's, I'm proud of that. Speaking of family and community, talk about, uh, this is Soda City, mm -hmm. Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah. So Columbia is bringing it back home. Yeah. So talk about how it feels to be able to come back to Columbia again. You know, I come here at least once a year, and every year I come here, I feel like, you know, there's, it's grown a little bit. I feel like, you know, they've <laughs> added another building. They've knocked something down, changed something, right. looks a little different. Uh, it's 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 like it's just like I don't know it's it's a wonderful feeling coming back home. Every time I come here, I always say probably the best four years of my life were, were spent in college. You know, Benedict and University of South Carolina. Being in college is great. I mean, you have not a care in the world. I mean, sure, yeah, you're gonna have some some right. debt when you finish, but yeah. you don't think about that when you're in college. You just want to have <laughs> fun. <laughs> think about it now. You think about it now. Now, now. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. You you you're surrounded by people who are like minded, who want to do the same things. They have as, um, aspirations. They're they're motivated. They're young. And all that energy, and it's just it's, it's a time in your life where you have to you know you just have to pay attention to it because when it's gone, you look back on it with longing eyes, going, I wish I wish I could go back. Even when I was walking around campus today, I'm thinking, man, I, I could do this again. You know, I don't want to go to class again, but I would like I would like to do this whole college thing again. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, this is an exciting weekend. Soda City Comic Con, August 25th and 26th. So glad to be here with these two, and you will see them this weekend as well. But I'm gonna send things back to you guys in the studio.